Politics now, and I'm joined here live in the studio by Liberal Democrats Senator David Lionhelm. Thanks for your company. Thank you. I'm a little concerned uh, to be in such proximity, Senator, uh, after last time. <laughs> I'm going to come and kill you, Peter Van Onselen. I know where you live. Um, I have tried to break into your house before. Um, I have threatened other people. Um, I'm armed. I'm coming after you. I've had to pull in security, you know, <laughs> protect my family. Disclaimer, as always, that's completely out of context. Good to have your company, though. Appreciate thank, you coming thank, back and thank you very much. playing along with us. Be assured, if I was going to do that to anyone, it wouldn't be you. <laughs> plenty of other people much higher in the queue. M much higher in the queue. We should start naming names no, in no. McCarthy hearing style. <laughs> All right, let's get into some of the serious issues in politics. Or Actually, let's start with what has almost become the theatre of the absurd before we get into the policy. Uh, the Liberal Party, the government, they look like they're imploding mm. and there's clearly all sorts of fractures going on there, driven by Abbott supporters unhappy with term the stupidity of Christopher Pine's comments, of course, have flared all of this up. So we can't exactly blame the Abbott supporters for starting it. But do you see this as um, a storm in a teacup or do you think this is something that's got some effect where it might roll on? It, it would be a storm in a teacup, but for the context in which it's occurring, there is a, a tribal war going on in the Liberal Party between those who... Well, I suppose the, the, to, the totemic issue is same-sex marriage. Mm. That's the, that's the one they all get uh, cranky about. There are those who are supporters, those who don't give a rats, and then there are those who are dead against it. And, uh, Should we be cynical of the plebiscite, given that those who are dead against it seem to all be in favour of the plebiscite? Yeah, well, so they, the ones who want the plebiscite think, or a lot of them think that the plebiscite will fail. Um, then there are others, like uh, Tim Wilson, for example, who says, no, we can win the plebiscite. I actually think the plebiscite would win myself, I think, would, would succeed. And I also don't think that a free vote in Parliament is necessarily a done deal to, to win either. Okay. No, I, you know, I don't know why the, um, uh, the gay lobby is so, so committed Where to... Where would it fail? In the Senate or in the House? Um, well, well, either. Uh, possibilities. Okay. I think... We'd, the, 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 I mean, I'm, I'm, I would vote in favour, but I think those of, who are counting the numbers are counting their chickens before they're hatched. I really don't. There's a lot of Liberal Party people and even Labor Party people who are, you know, either quietly or sometimes openly dead against it. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think Australians are much different from the Irish. They voted overwhelmingly in favour of it. I think there's nothing to be afraid of with a plebiscite. I'd, I'd well, the argument from the, the LGBTI community is that it would be hurtful and spiteful and they're, they're not yeah. interested in it for that uh, reason, whether that's, that's a good reason or not. That's a, that's a dreadful reason. It suggests that uh, gays and lesbians are delicate little flowers and can't handle a, a robust public debate. It's a ridiculous idea. And in Ireland, they, um, they, they handled it, you know. Yes, there was... What about the cost, though? People. I mean, you're fiscal conservative. Yeah. What do you think of yeah. that? Well, we'll run it at the same time as the election. OK. That would be the way I'd do it, to, to minimise the cost. So on the government, though, just to wrap this up before we go into some policy mm -hmm. discussions, do you think that there is a serious threat to Malcolm Turnbull's leadership internally, or do you think that that's premature? No, it's premature. There's no heir apparent. But life is difficult, and... When I talk to Labor, they are so confident that they're going to win the next election, they're sort of they're angling for jobs, you know. Work. Too confident? Oh, who, time will tell, you know, get, I'll get back to you on that one. I suspect there is a feeling within the Liberal Party that it doesn't matter what we do, whether, you know, we win an education vote in the Senate and get legislation through, or what we do, um, our goose is cooked. When you say we, you're not including yourself in No, that. I mean, I think that's... <laughs> no, definitely not. I'm thinking that uh, that's, that's, that's the talk amongst them, that it doesn't matter what the Libs do, um, they, uh, they, they're going to lose government. They can't seem to get back in the polls. There is no heir apparent, though, to replace Turnbull, mm. so I can't see how this leadership talk is going to go anywhere. I, there's nobody sitting there waiting to take over, and uh, they're not going to re-elect Abbott, I'm confident. Do about. you agree with my colleague Peter Credlin that Tony Abbott doesn't want the Prime Ministership back? I don't think... I think that's right, yes. Okay. I, th I think that's probably Doesn't right. Doesn't want it or just knows he won't get well, it? Well, yes, that's a, that's a moot point. He may know he won't get it. I, I think what he'd like to see is Turnbull fail. <laughs> um, I don't doubt about that. And uh, then, you know, I, I, sort of Churchill-like, he would return to save the party from... Um, uh, from uh, a, a total demolition. See, I could see him... I was talking to Sam Maiden about this before. I could see him coming back in opposition, but yes. not before the election. Yes. So in other words, they get wiped out yes. and then they decide that in hindsight it was an error to have gotten rid of him, let's go back to him, he's proven himself as an opposition leader before, right. if he wants it. Exactly. 
Um, yes, I could see that happening, uh, that after the, after the election, assuming uh, Turnbull loses, he will be called back to take on the job. And he is a good opposition mm. leader. He's very focused and he knows how to, how to win an election. He's just not as good a prime minister.